much. Oh my gosh. I'm only eight pages in, but I already have a complaint. Are we surprised? I fucking love dragons and I see them. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and I am back with the second installment of my Jay Reads the Grishaverse series. You guys asked for the next book in the series. It is Siege and Storm. The TV show came out yesterday and obviously since I have not finished the series, I did not watch it, but everybody is raving about it, saying that it's incredible. So we're speeding our way through Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo so that I can read the other six books, well, five after this, and get on that bandwagon because I just want to watch it. My mom's bugging me to watch it and saying we're not going to watch it until like july because it's gonna take me forever to read these books so we're starting it today i gave the first book four out of five stars i liked it it was a good time while i was reading it fell for mal hate the darkling but also secretly love him at the same time alina's pretty cool excited to see more genya because i still am a little confused whether or not she is evil or not i'm hoping that she's gonna do a 180 or 360 whatever i think it's 180 that's when you flip halfway right because a 360 would be all the way back to evil so we're hoping she's doing a 180 she's gonna turn into a good girl again because she's one of my fave characters but i'm excited to see where this one takes us there's obviously going to be spoilers in this because it's just me reading the book given my reactions when i have a thought and it's gonna be a fun time hopefully so let us get started in reading siege and storm by Lee Bardugo. I'm only eight pages in, but I already have a complaint. Are we surprised? Alina talks about the only way that she's recognizable is if people see the collar, like the stag bones around her neck, which I don't understand how that's the only way that she's identifiable because she's the sun summoner. Wasn't she like on wanted posters? Like she's the sun summoner. I feel like people know what she looks like but apparently nobody knows what she looks like unless they see this collar. And it just doesn't make sense to me. Like everybody knows what the Darkling looks like and I'm pretty sure everybody would know what Alina looked like. I just, I'm not believing it. I'm not buying this logic, my girl, not buying it. So the Darkling showed up, obviously, and they like capture Alina and take her pistol away. Just use your sun summoning powers. I don't understand like just blind a bitch kill some people why are you just standing there doing nothing like i understand that they have a knife to mal's throat but like sacrifice him save yourself men are never worth it i don't understand <sighs> bitch now there's shadow monsters i am so ready for these darkling shadow monster things to wreak havoc on this world i love this so far I am also very creeped out by the shadow monsters. Are they like Dementors in Harry Potter where they like literally just like, you know what I'm talking about? Or like, do they form the shapes of different like, creatures? Like, are they gonna turn into like wolves or like wood? Or are they just like shapeless forms with mouths and fangs? So know. we just met a character named Stromhund, who I have never heard anybody talk about. And I don't know if that's just because he's like a very minor character and just doesn't show up after this. But I love him. He's like a pirate, basically, I guess you could say. He like steals things and like he's always on the sea, blah, blah, blah. But he is so sarcastic and like just the perfect amount of dick that I love. He just saved like Alina and these two crew people from Ivan, who's the Darkling's heart render. But he was like squishing their hearts because Alina was like being mistreated. So they like came and was like, stop. So Strumhund comes with a gun and like puts it to Ivan's throne. He's like, basically fuck off or I'm gonna kill you. The things that he said were like super funny. Ivan was basically like, do you know who I am? And Strumhund was like, I don't care who you are on land, on this ship you're nothing but ballast, unless I put you over the side, in which case you're shark bait. I like shark. Cooks up tough, but it makes for a little variety. Remember that the next time you have a mind to threaten anyone aboard this vessel. Go on now, shark bait. Scurry back to your master. And then Ivan's like, I won't forget this. And he's like, that's the point. <laughs> and then Alina's trying to like beg him to 
help her basically and he's just like dude don't waste your time unless your story has a talking dog in it I don't want to hear it and I'm just like Ugh me i love this man i pledge allegiance to him instead of mal i'm changing my story even though he probably is never going to be in the book again i love him i was like wanting genya to be good but it was just revealed that she never sent mal the letters that alina was trying to send to him and like why genya and she's like oh the darkling said that you had to leave your old life behind bitch fucking send the letters we were supposed to be her friend i am that makes me so sad because like I really liked Genya. So I guess she never really was her friend or she maybe thought it was better that way, but no, Genya. <laughs> Excuse me, why did none of you tell me that there was a sea dragon in this? I fucking love dragons and a sea dragon just makes it so much better. Like all I'm picturing in my head is like that blue dragon pokemon i'll insert a picture here because i have no idea what it's called but i am living for the sea dragon i hope he kills somebody which really means he's probably gonna get killed because he's supposed to be the next amplifier for alina but i hope he like takes a chunk out of somebody's leg or something preferably ivan's <laughs> bitch oh my gosh tola tolia whatever his name is and tamar are heart renders and they're fucking Ivan up oh my god I was not expecting that I am oh Stronghold has some tricks up his sleeve having Grisha work for him oh I am so loving this ah. oh my god Stromhond or however the fuck you say it I still don't know is Nikolai I'm literally shocked. I had no fucking clue. And everybody's always talking about how amazing Nikolai was. And I have been saying since I started this book how much I love Stromhund. And he's Nikolai. I'm so excited to read more about this man. Oh, this is like literally so exciting to me because everybody like raves about Nikolai and how like perfect he is. So I am joining the Nikolai bandwagon, I guess. Okay, but joke's on me for saying that Stromhund was gonna be like a super minor character. <laughs> if I knew how to edit my face into a clown, I would. <laughs> But I'm not mad about it because I fucking love him. Okay, so I'm kind of confused right now. There's been two instances where the Darkling has been able to, like, come into Alina's space without actually being there. And she thinks that it's, like, a hallucination. It happened once while they were on the fold and it happened again when she was in the Darkling's chambers because she's now, like, leading the second army so she has to sleep in his old chambers. Whatever. But both times that it happened, it talks about how the wound on her shoulder from the shadow monster things is like tingling so is he able to like come into her area without being there through the wound is that like a thing that is happening is it like a connection between the two of them forever now other than like the caller like is that a whole nother plot line that is going to take place because that would be terrifying but very convenient for the darkling sucks for alina but i'm still so far from the end of this book and i feel like i've been reading it for like a month it's literally been like a, maybe a week but it feels way longer and another thing alina has had two instances where she's had like super dark thoughts one on the fold before the darkling showed up and then once in the little palace when she almost used the cut to kill Sergei because he was like talking back to her and she was not having it so she was like thinking about killing him with the cut but then like redirected it at the last second and cut a hole in the tent so is that like the darkling controlling her thoughts and making her like think evil or is she maybe because of the wound like a little bit of the darkness is seeping in is that also a thing Am I like cracking the code of the Shadow and Bone Grisha series already? Probably not. I'm probably just talking out of my ass, which I do a lot, but it would be an interesting development. So I'm here for it. Darkling controlling Alina through the wound on her okay, shoulder. So I'm on chapter 19 and basically the past like couple of chapters has just been Mal being a complete asshole because he went on this huge rampage about how him and Alina haven't been spending a lot of time together blah 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 which I think is really stupid because like the whole thing with Nikolai and Alina 
and Mal is that nobody's supposed to know that Mal and Alina are together and everyone's supposed to think that Alina and Nikolai are a thing so they're not allowed to be all lovey-dovey so he's like mad that they're not all lovey-dovey and then he like corners Alina in her chambers and basically like, complains that they're not spending time together but then he gets upset because like I said earlier the darkling has been like showing up in her like rooms and stuff and so he leans in to kiss her and she flinches because the darkling is standing behind her and then he freaks out that she flinched and he's like you know that I've kissed like so many girls and I know what it means when they flinch like if you don't want me just tell me you don't want me and she's like no like I, I do want you it's just and then she like doesn't tell him because he cuts her off and is like no I'm done bye and then leave and now he's just like an alcoholic and just being like an absolute dickhead to Alina and what I don't understand is if Mal is supposed to be so in tuned with Alina's feelings and like know her so well why is he acting like a total dinkus and she literally was like no it's not that I don't want you and he's just like no fuck you like I <sighs> So I cancel my love for Mal because he's really pissing me off and I'm just going to go full on force for Nikolai. I love Nikolai and nobody else in this book because this man is pissing me off so much. Just got to the part where Nikolai is on the pier with Alina and he like leans in and says I want to kiss you and she runs away because he says something about her needing to forget Mal before he kisses her and so is this now supposed to be a love square with Alina the Darkling Mal and Nikolai because I thought Nikolai and Alina were like pretending to like each other because it would make them look good to the public but now Nikolai actually likes Alina and Alina actually likes Nikolai because she wanted to kiss him or is it just like a need for attention because Mal is ignoring her so Vasily is a dumbass which I could have told you that like when I first met him he basically just handed the whole city to the darkling because he's an arrogant prick so I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna die really soon except Alina obviously because she's not allowed to die because she's the main character and not Mal and obviously not Nikolai or at least he better not die because if he dies I'm gonna be so mad but I mean he has a whole nother series so I don't really think he can die except I mean technically he can because she could just tell it as a different story. Anyways, he's not gonna die. I refuse to let him die. Vasily got his arm chopped off and now he's dead. So I mean, karma is working in full force here. So I mean, that's good. But again, I'm pretty sure literally everybody but the main characters are gonna die now. So <laughs> good job, Vasily. Okay. I'm done. I finished it. Uh, so we ended off with Alina pretending to go with the Darkling and then she like drains him of his power but obviously he doesn't die. He's now claimed the throne. She escapes with Mal. The twins, Tol Tolia, Tomer, whatever, they're actually part of the priest's worship of Alina. So that was a twist I did not see coming. And so they like saved her, brought her underground to the priest i'm assuming that nikolai is still alive but we don't know like i said darkling is in power now but doesn't know that alina is still alive or he might doesn't really say the third book alina's gotta defeat the darkling like that's what's gonna happen i think and then and then i'm assuming her and mal are gonna be end game because that's what feels like is gonna happen and i really hope it's not because i really don't like mal in this book at least at the end i don't like him i just want her to love nikolai and i want them to have little cute babies actually you know what no i want alina to end up alone you know i just i feel like she can be strong on her own and then the darkling i don't want to die but he's probably going to be defeated or like exiled or something and mal i don't really care what happens but as long as nikolai still lives i'm happy i think i'm going to give this a four out of five stars like i really liked it i thought it was a lot of fun i think it was on the same enjoyment level as the first book and i'm hoping that the third book is better but I heard a lot of people say that the third book is the worst in the series and it kind of like took a turn that nobody wanted. So I guess we'll see when we read the third book. But let me know if you guys want to see a vlog of that or if you're just not interested, I could also just not do a vlog. So yeah, let me know. Thank you for joining me on this reading vlog and I need to go start the third book so that I can finally watch the TV show because 
and we still haven't done that and it's now like the middle of May so we're a little behind but thanks for joining me and I will see you all in my next video goodbye